Okay, welcome back to Green Plum Summit 2020, our very own reimagined digital customer conference. My name is Jacques Eistock, and for our next guest, I'd like to introduce one of our open source cloud users. If you're like me, you may have found yourself, or if you have kids, you may have found them uh, maintaining their social distancing by playing video games. Frank is here. Uh, he's joined me uh, to talk about uh, gaming mad skills with Apache, Madlib, and Greenplum. So, Frank, thanks for joining. Happy to be here. Awesome. Um, you know, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend it with us. Can you give the audience just a little bit about your own personal background so we know a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm just a nerd, kind of like the rest of you guys here. Um, you know, I was uh, I grew up with um, computers all around me. My dad was an, is, is an engineer, so uh, we had a mini computer, which is the farthest thing from being mini that you could probably imagine. Uh, it was the only room in our house that had air conditioning was where that computer was. Uh, programming it, you needed involved some soldering. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it was so hot in there. So uh, you know, it was great. Um, uh, great work with that stuff growing up. Um, I sold my first piece of software in ninth grade. Um, I got to be a developer during the dot com um, era, which was super exciting because there was so much innovation, and you know it seemed like every day we were inventing something because there was some new problem we couldn't solve. So, um, super lucky to have been doing all that. Um, and then I spent you know probably about the last fifteen years or so in various architecture roles at 500, Fortune 500, Fortune 100, and Fortune 50 companies. Um, so lots of experience uh, across a great sort of span of different things. And now I'm super excited to be uh, heading up the technology side on a, on a very exciting startup called Drop-In Gaming. All right. So that's a great um, uh, intro. And, and I think Unlike ninth grade, I'll take the nerd comment with a badge of honor as opposed to a fight in words. <laughs> so why don't you tell? <laughs> why don't you tell everybody about Drop in Gaming? Where did the idea come from? What is the idea exactly? Who are your customers? What are you guys really trying to trying to accomplish? Yeah, so uh, Drop in Gaming is an online tournament management platform. Um, so we don't we don't run the games themselves, but what we provide is basically the ability to buy into online tournaments um, for the chance to win money. Um, and so we manage the whole tournament piece of it. So that's what Drop-In Gaming is. Um, and really what, what its intention is, is you look at the video game industry and it's just staggering how enormous that industry is. It's, you know, there's an estimated two and a half billion people worldwide playing video games um, 220 million in the U S that number is probably outdated now with COVID, right. It's probably bigger now. Um, and, and that 220 million people represents a $40 billion annual spend. So it's just staggering. Wow. Yeah. It's totally staggering how big this industry is. Um, but then when you actually look at who's making money playing video games, it's a tiny percentage of those gamers that can become pros. It's like trying to become a pro athlete or, uh, trying to break into Hollywood or, or become a rock star or something. It's, it's a tiny segment of people um, that are gobbling up that, you know, gobbling up all that revenue. Um, so our idea really is looking at the everyday gamer and trying to provide an opportunity for them to be able to play video games for, you know, real money. Um, and that's what drop-in gaming is. We, uh, we're targeted at gamers, um, everyday gamers, we're gamers ourselves. Um, Jason Atwood, our C CEO, is um, he's a, actually a pro athlete in the past, um, also a pro poker player. So he really understands sort of that uh, that side of um, the segment. And Tanner Bogart is a lifelong athlete as well. So he understands the competitive side of things and, and is a lifelong gamer. So we really come into the into the platform with the gamers mentality. And we're trying to open it up to everybody. Okay, so that's that's super interesting and actually very diverse. I, I rarely find myself talking to a group such as yours. Um, so I, I appreciate the opportunity. So so now that we know a little bit about you, we know a little bit about the company, can you tell me a little bit about the challenges that you guys are trying to solve that or you're facing and, and where exactly does 
does Green Plum and and Madlib come in to kind of help either you or your or your users? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we understand that really, you know, you're buying into tournaments, so you've got you know your money at stake, right? So we understand that that's a scary barrier to entry for a lot of people, right? So where we started and what we centered everything on is basically security, right? So we're providing transparency around how the finances work, um, where your money is, how it's being managed, how are the games managed? What are the rules for the games? Um, what's the what's the transparent and fair dispute process? Basically all these different components that we focused on to begin with to make sure that there's a sense of comfort and security around the entire platform. Um, and so that's really the first place where Green Plum and Madlib come in is, uh, you know, a, a big part of it is how do I know that somebody isn't cheating or, or you know, gaming the system? So there's a lot of pattern behavior matching, uh, both for in-game cheating and also platform fraud, right? Uh, behavioral patterns, um, you know, trying to identify networks of people that are maybe working together um, against other players, things like that. Um, but security and, you know, anti-fraud stuff isn't really what gets us up in the morning, right? Th those are important things to do and important things to focus on. But what really excites us and where the platform comes in is trying to become like, imagine, uh, you know, when it comes to skill-based matchmaking and identifying new games and platforms that a gamer might be interested in. Um, you know, we're trying to be sort of like Amazon where you buy a phone case and the next thing you know, you're being recommended all these products that you didn't even know about. So we're looking at the networks of, of gamers playing together and identifying people with similar styles and playing similar games and um, buying into tournaments at similar kinds of buy-in levels and similar times of day and all these different components. Um, and then we're recommending, you know, Hey, maybe you should be playing with these guys over here. Maybe you should be playing this other game that you've never touched uh, because it's like completely honed in for the way you play. So, uh, so, so if I were to die, if I were to read some of that back to you, just for the audience, it sounds like, you know, table stakes to use that term, right. Would be security. So I think of that, you know, like going to Vegas, if if I know that uh, the casino is not going to be actively uh, thieving me, I was going to say robbing, but 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 they're always robbing me. Uh, <laughs> th then I'm I'm more likely to go if if I suspect that there's cheating involved, I probably won't go. So that's like your table stakes uh, yep. uh, area. And then the other thing I heard you say was, uh, let's say you and I are playing, I don't know, Call of Duty a lot, um, but my son uh, happens to like Fortnite. Um, perhaps it either means that we should play Fortnite with him or he should play Call of Duty with us. Right, exactly, exactly. And then it, it goes much farther than that, right? Because you can go into the network of all these people and you know that's sort of a friends of friends, but within the entire network, we can match those sorts of patterns. So ah, it's, uh, yes. it's, it, it gets as broad as the community is. Yep, that makes sense because I think based on my son's skills, I'd rather play you than I would do him. <laughs> yeah, same, same. Yep, yep. My stepson, the same thing. I will never play him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about how how did you stumble upon Green Plum, or why did you choose it? There's a lot of analytical alternatives that are out there, and and you know why people choose Green Plum, I, I think, is super important. Well. Uh, Drop-in gaming is built completely on open source technology to begin with. Um, you know, so Greenplum being open source, um, it's an obvious first place to look. Um, but if you, you know, I was just describing some of the pattern matching that we do. Um, you can't do that without the data, right? So the the data is really, you know, highly prized. You know, it's it's my biggest asset. Um, so I don't want to basically hand that off to anyone. Um, definitely nothing that's closed source. I want to feel comfortable that I have control over it uh, at all times. Um, also as CTO, I'm, I have to move super fast um, and I can't be held down basically by decisions I've made in the past before I could appreciate our scale. 
Um, I need to be able to change my mind about things, right? Um, and I can't be, I can't have analysis paralysis. I've got to make decisions and move forward and then deal with it. And um, Greenplum's flexibility, especially when it comes to cloud, um, is a huge asset for us as well. Um, we're just on AWS right now, but uh, you know, it's very likely that we're going to be expanding beyond that. Um, and so Greenplum is a great choice from that cloud agnostic standpoint. Um, and, um, you know, bottom line, I already mentioned open source, but the fact that it's open source is really important from a financial standpoint too. We're a startup, every penny counts. Um, so that's, it's a huge factor there too. It makes sense. And, and you heard a little bit uh, earlier today and you'll hear uh, quite a bit more later, but as Greenplum continues to embrace uh, open source Postgres, and, and I say continue because uh, we're the only uh, Postgres-based platform to, uh, to get to current Postgres. And so as we continue to drive through that, the things that you're doing in, in the platform for Drop and Gaming should easily be able to trickle down into a Greenplum because of that close cousin yep. nature of it. So that's awesome. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So, so, so I will um, uh, kind of in the interest of time, just ask uh, one more question. Um, and that would be, uh, you know, as uh, you continue to get data from your platform, is there, um, you know, anything within uh, the Apache Mad Lib um, arena, because we haven't talked about that in any of Greenplum Summits, um, any of their uh, specific algorithms or um, uh, ways of attacking data, you know, through the federated process, for example, are any of those, um, you know, providing uh, insights that you would uh, want to call out here, or or are you still kind of early on in your discovery of of that, or or maybe maybe the real question really is like, how did you get to Madlib? We talked about Greenplum, but but what about the the Madlib side? Right. Well, it's the uh, it's the algorithms that are built in, right? And it's like k-means and graph analysis and latent derelict um, allocation. All these things are already built in, so we don't have to sit and try to invent these things. We can just connect it up, start the pattern matching, and away we go. Perfect. I uh, you have to remind me after Greenplum Summit to talk about the uh, real time scoring for Apache Madlib project that uh, we started, which allows you to take these models uh, from Greenplum and actually deploy them into production in a RESTful uh, API that allows you to, again, kind of in real time, use that same model without having to, to rewrite anything. And so, you yeah. know, as you continue to deploy things, uh, I think you guys might find that somewhat interesting. Absolutely, for sure. Well, Frank, I, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to come and talk to us uh, today. I, uh, I I lied, maybe I'll ask you one more question you know, <laughs> since I brought it up, you know, Fortnite or Call of Duty, which way would you go? <laughs> Call of Duty, man, it's way too hard to learn how to build one when you're old like we are. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay, so uh, thanks for talking with us, Frank, um, from Drop In Gaming. It's always great to talk to some uh, users of the actual product. Thank you for choosing Greenplum. Thank you for all that you do uh, to help push the product to be better and better. And, and I'll, of course, reach out if you ever need anything. Absolutely, will do. Thanks so much.